Hello guys, today we're going to be talking about expiration alerts, alright? Um, this is going to be a really important video because this is one of the most requested Excel features and uh, you have to learn about a bunch of formulas in order to get this to work, alright? We're going to be covering normal formulas, we're going to be covering conditional formulas and we're going to be covering conditional formatting, alright? Um, guys, you don't need any preliminary knowledge to get into this, but it would be a really good idea for you to actually know a little bit about Excel formulas. I'll do my best to explain it to you. So let's get started. Um, expiration alerts. What happens is that we have a bunch of invoices that were sent to a bunch of clients and they have a very specific delivery date. All right. Now we want to figure out, we want to figure out if that invoice, um, it's uh, the delivery rate has been expired, about to expire or it's in time. All right. And uh, whether we should get packing or whatever. All right, guys. So let's get started. The first thing that we have to know is figure out what day it is today. All right. So that's a very simple thing that we can get to do in Excel. I'll just go over to my G12 cell right here and start typing in the, the today formula. All right. So equals today, open and close parenthesis. All right, guys, open and close parenthesis and I press enter. That's going to give me today's date. Now it's the 14th of November of 2018. All right. 14th of November of 2018. Um, now, based on that, I need to figure out if my invoices were delivered properly or um, they've already expired and we need to get our, our stuff together. All right. So let's do the following. I'm going to try to figure out how many days are remaining on the invoices. I'm going to select, for example, this one, which should have been delivered the 13th of October of 2018. Mm, and I'm going to subtract this one right here. All right. So it gives me a negative number, minus 32. This invoice should have been delivered 32 days ago. All right. 32 days ago. That means we are really, really behind on that one. But whatever. Maybe we're not so bad on the other ones. Here, check this out. The first thing that I see my students struggle struggling with in, in the classroom is the following. When I tell them, all right, we have the formula, we have the subtraction, now just drag it all the way down. They do the double click to do the dragging and voila, we have a bunch of problems with the formula. Now it tells me that all of the, of the delivery dates, they have 43,000 days remaining. Okay. Yeah. That's not going to work. All right. That's not going to work. What's, go what's wrong there? Well, if we expand the formula, the original formula, notice that we have a red square and a blue square. I'm asking it to subtract the red square from the blue, blue square. All right. Now check out the positions. All right. I'm going to move over to the next formula. And now we have a blue square and a red square. Notice how both move because my formula's position moved. But while I am fine with the blue square moving, I am not okay with this red square being moved. All right. So I have to do an absolute reference. I have to do an absolute reference to make sure that this red square stays right here where we have the date for today. All right, guys. So let's get back there. I'm going to click right here in G12. Notice how my mouse uh, cursor is right blinking right over G12. And right then and there, I'm going to press F4 on my keyboard. This creates an absolute reference and the dollar signs mean that nothing is going to move, not the columns, not the rows. So press enter and drag it all the way down again. And now there we go. All right. Notice how the red square is still in the same place, no matter how far down we go. All right, guys. So there we go. We have, um, 32, I mean, we have 32 days overdue on the first invoice. The second invoice, we still have 23 days left and we're able to do another 40 days. I mean, this company, whatever it's doing, it's wrong, all right? Uh, they have a ton of invoices that are overdue. So um, let's generate a warning so we can avoid uh, getting into, into overdue territory, all right? So I'm going to set up a warning that's going to consist of three days warning, all right? If we are three days in front of the invoice, then we have to tell it it's about to expire, all right? Oh, there's a terrible typo there, warning. Warning days. All right, guys. So now what we're going to try and do is figure out the status of each invoice, whether it's expired, about to expire or on time. All right, guys. Um, let's start this with just a very simple formula. It's going to be an if formula. All right. Now, if is a very essential formula for Excel, uh, it'd be better if you already knew it. But if you don't, I'll do my best to try to explain it here in as little time as possible. 
and uh, let's check it out, all right? Now, I'll type if and I'll open a parenthesis. And if is going to figure out if one thing is something or the other, all right? Let's go over here to fx. And this is my function helper, all right? I'm going to be using it in order to figure out uh, what the next arguments are for my if function. So it's first, it's first asking me for a logical test. Let's create a logical test to figure out if the invoice is expired or not, all right? So my logical test here is going to be check out the days remaining and check out uh, whether they are less than zero, all right? Whether, whether they are less than zero. All right, so days remaining, if they are less than zero, then we're going to call this expired, all right? And if they are not, then we're going to call this on time. All right, guys, I'm going to press OK here, and this is going to tell me a binary, give me a binary result. Stuff is either expired or on time. There's really no alternative about it, all right? Now, this would be good enough for some of you, but since we're trying to include a warning here, include an about to expire category, we need a possible third result, which is going to be about to expire. Now, if you remember the if function, it's only showing me two different results. Either it's if this condition is true or if this condition is false. So that's not going to work for me. All right, that's not going to work for me. I have to figure out a way to show a third result. Well, there is a way, and it's called a nested if. Now, nested ifs are some sort of, uh, you could call it an advanced topic. And um, in the online course, we dedicate like a bunch of, of videos to nested ifs. But I am going to try to explain to you in a very short time. Pay attention. I would really recommend that if you don't get it on this try, there's other, other videos on my channels on, on nested ifs, so you can try and fi figure it out there. All right? So, nested ifs. How to add a third possibility here. Uh, we have our logical test, our value of true, and our value of false. What I'm going to do is, without recurring to the formula helper right here, I'm going to delete my value if false, all right? And instead, right here, I'm going to open up a new if, all right? This new if is going to test for something else, and uh, this little test is going to show me whether we have our whether we are on time or whether our invoice is about to expire. All right, guys? So if uh, the days remaining are less than or equals to whatever our warning days are, and we need to make an absolute reference here to the warning days to make sure that this red square never moves, then we, if, this, if it's less than the warning days, then I'm going to tell it that it's about to expire, all right? And if it's not, then I'm going to say it's on time, all right? So close the parenthesis, and there we go. All right, drag it all the way down, and we should find something that is about to expire somewhere. I mean, here, this one. This one is three days away from its expiration date, so it's about to expire. This one is one day away from its expiration date, so it's about to expire. And we did this, we, we did that thing to the fact that we nested one if within another if. All right, guys? So just as an addendum here, I, I want you to note that every time that we need to add a possible extra answer to the ifs, then we have nested ifs, all right? We have nested ifs, and we can include up to 255 ifs within ifs, all right? 255 nested ifs. Now, guys, uh, for those of you that are using Excel 2019, there's a new formula called ifs, all right, ifs in plural, and it's going to change the way we use this. But I'm not going to cover it here because it's so new that I'm going to dedicate its, its own video to this one, to that one, all right? Okay, guys, so um, this should be good enough for us. We have our data, we have our results, we have how many, uh, I mean, we have whether the invoice is expired on time or it's about to expire. And this should be good enough that good enough for my audience, who I know is analytical and thinks and can think of on their own. But for their bosses that never graduated kindergarten, they like to see stuff with colors and good presentation and stuff like that. So for their benefit, let's actually paint this with the proper colors. All right, guys, so let's delve into a topic of conditional formatting. How is that going to work? Well, I'm going to select my entire column here. I'm going to select my entire E column. I'm going to go over here to the conditional formatting button, and I'm going to tell it to highlight cells rules with the rule that is text that contains. All right, so cells that contain the text expired 
I want to color, the, color them red. However, I don't want this preset red that they're offering me. I want it to look more like this. So I'm going to select from this menu, the custom format, all right, guys? Click here on custom format. And then this is where I can go wild with, uh, with formatting, all right? I can do pretty much anything I want. So let's figure out what, what it is that we can do. I want it to be bold. I want it to have a red fill and I want the font to be of a white color, all right, guys? So it's going to be red fill. I mean, this aggressive red to make sure that it stands out. Um, bold and white color. All right, guys, let's press OK. And notice how now I have something that looks more like this one right here. All right. And this is going to color all of my expired uh, invoices right here for me. All right, guys, what else is up there? I'm going to select my entire column E. I'm going to go over to my conditional formatting, select highlight cells rules and text that contains. Now, the on time, I'm going to paint it blue. But again, my own shade of blue. So I'm going to go over here to custom format and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Bold, color white, and the fill is going to be blue. Okay, okay, there we go. Now we have our expireds and our own time. The only thing that we are missing are or about to expire, all right? So again, select the entire column, go over to conditional formatting and create a new rule. Uh, equals to about to expire, press custom format. And yes, I know you're tired of watching me paint this up, but this is the last one. Again, bold and the color is going to be black. Black uh, contrasts better with yellow. So press OK. And we should see some yellow over here. There we go. About to expire. Those are yellows. Guys, we're good to go. Okay. So now this looks like it was vomited by a clown, but at least this satisfies our boss's request that we should have everything painted up. Whenever we add something else or whenever we change something like the date, then we are going to get a change here in the status, all right? So this date coming from the formula today is going to be updated whenever the, um, whenever the computer's clock changes, all right? So say for example, if I were to type in, I don't know, um, a date from a month ago. So I'm going to hard code it in there because I can't force the formula to do it. 13 of October of 2018. All right, notice how a bunch of stuff, tough stuff now changes color because it's now on time and there's very few expired items. However, if I were to move this up to, I don't know, the 13th of December, pretty much everything would have expired, all right? Notice how everything is expired and very few things are on time. And if I were to move this further up, to 2019. All right, we're screwed. Everything has expired with about a year, <laughs> about a year ago. All right, guys. So this is pretty much the power of, of making this uh, with Excel formulas. It's going to be dynamic and it's going to adapt itself uh, with whatever, I mean, whatever policy changes we have, either the date changing or even the warning days changing. If I were to change the warning days from three to eight, a lot of stuff would now be painted yellow. A lot more stuff would be painted yellow. All right, guys, and we didn't need to change anything from the formulas because they're ready to receive any of the changes you, you input into them. All right, guys. Now, in order to finish up, uh, what I want you to show, what I want to show you is that the important thing is not the colors. It's actually being, being able to analyze uh, data. All right. So I'm going to show you pretty quickly how you could get a very quick count of Invoices that have expired, that are about to expire, and that are on time. We're going to be using pivot tables for that, all right? So I'm going to press Control T. I'm sorry. I'm going to select my uh, one cell, whichever one I want in my table over here, and I'm going to press Control T. This turns, um, this turns my table into an Excel table, and it's pretty useful for when I want to use it within a pivot table. So I'm going to go over here to Insert, Pivot Table, and it's going to ask me, is it coming from table one? Yes, it's coming from table one. And where is it going to? Well, it's going to an existing worksheet right about here. Yeah, that's where I like it. All right, guys, so here's my new pivot table. Now, it's going to be really simple. Even if you don't know pivot tables, this is going to be really simple. I'm just going to grab the status and drag it down here to rows. It shows me my three possible statuses. And then I'm going to grab status and drag it down here to values. All right, there we are. Now, we'll notice that this company is pretty much a mess. They have about 50% of their possible invoices. They've already let them expire, all right? So this is terrible. 
and uh, the rest, well, here they are. Now, this is just one possible way of showing how many how many invoices we have expired and the time when we're about to expire. For those of you that already know Excel, you could use a countif, all right? You could use a countif. Now, guys, one thing that I want you to notice is that if we actually change the date, say, for example, 14 of 12 of 2018, the pivot table doesn't update until we go over here to analyze and press refresh. And there we go. Now we refresh all the numbers within the pivot table. All right, guys? Well, that's pretty much it for right now. I hope you learned a, lot, a bunch of stuff. And if you liked the video, make sure that you subscribe and press like and leave your comment and tell your friends about it. All right. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video.